Hello there, my name is Paisley and welcome to my Let's Play of Dark Souls 3. I decided to do a, this as my first Let's Play because I'm such a huge fan of the Dark Souls series as a whole and I have a funny feeling that this is probably going to be the best Dark Souls game. Uh, I mean, that's high hopes for sure, but uh, I genuinely think that. I think this is going to be, like, after watching the way Bloodborne turned out and seeing, like, a completely 100% completed game from FromSoft, because Dark Souls 1 was not that, and Dark Souls 2 wasn't even led by Miyazaki, so... But anyway, uh, this is going to be, in my opinion, the full first fully completed Dark Souls 3 game by Miyazaki, or Dark Souls game by Miyazaki, I should say. So, I don't know, high hopes, but let's hope my hopes aren't dashed. This is a completely blind playthrough, uh, so if I fuck up, uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not horrible at this game, but I'm not promising anything either, so uh, anyway, let's get started, I guess. Yes, indeed. It is called Lothric. Where the transitory lands of the Lords of Cinder converge. In venturing north, the pilgrims discover the truth of the old words. Saint of the Deep. Farron's undead legion, the Abyss Watchers. will abandon their thrones. And the unkindled will rise. Nameless, accursed, undead, unfit even to be cinder. So it is that Ash seeketh embers. So, interesting story so far. Uh, definitely different from the first two games, which is always a good thing. Um, I'm not a huge fan of over and over repetition of the exact same plot, and I don't think Miyazaki is either, which I'm glad. <laughs> Uh, essentially, I'm just gonna do a, a fast forward of me building my character. Uh, we'll go through the main stuff really quick first, but the, as far as the actual customization, I'm not gonna let you, or I'm not gonna make you sit there and watch my whole uh, customization. But I like to, I like to spend some time on it. So let's see, let's take a look here. 
Uh, name, we'll, we'll worry about that in a second. Gender, male, yeah, that's good. Age, I can't tell, so we'll wait <laughs> to change that for a second. So, okay, this is the big one. Uh, I have no idea what I want to play my character as right now, so let's just see. Obscure Knight of Poor Renown of Collapsed Roaming... Oh, sorry. Uh, an Obscure Knight of Poor Renown who collapsed roaming the land, sturdy owing to high vitality and stout armor. Hmm. A mercenary and veteran of the battlefield, high dexterity, uh, ah, high dexterity allows masterful wielding of dual scimitars. So dex class, uh, that's, this looks like a overall balance class, it seems. A little bit high vitality, which is really good. The warrior, descendant of northern warriors famed for their brawn, utilizes high strength to wield a heavy battle axe. So strength class, essentially. So that's cool, you get your, your big three right, out of the, right off the bat, you get your quality, dex, strength. And Harold, a former herald who journeyed to finish a quest undertaken, wields a sturdy spear and employs a gentle, restorative miracle. So, it looks like a melee-based faith class, as I can tell from the stats. Uh, got a little bit of dex and strength, or fairly balanced, a little bit more strength, one point, but uh, but 13 faith. So yeah, it's a, if you want to use weapons, but use faith, I guess this is the class you go for, which is interesting, because I can see cleric on the bottom there, so I'm assuming that's going to be the pure faith base. Thief, making her re return to the game, a common thief and pitiful deserter. Wields a dagger intended for backstabs alongside a military-issued bow. Military-issued, hmm. Anyway, uh, so classic thief build, a little bit of intelligence, dex, uh, endurance, uh, high luck, hmm, interesting. Assassin, an assassin who stalks their prey from the shadows, favors sorceries in addition to thrusting swords. So you got a, a fan of the rapier, I guess, as the assassin looks really balanced, holy crap. High attunement, so that's, that, would that give you two slots? Well, I, I don't know how this game's stats work just yet, so, but that might give you two slots with, with that much attunement. High dex, uh, balanced intelligence and faith, pretty much a little higher intelligence, so if you wanted to do, a, I'm, I'm sure they have a, a, a combination of intelligence faith like the, um, oh, what did they call it, uh, the dark magic or whatever. I'm not a huge, huge on magic. I, I don't mind it. I actually prefer spell swords as my general playthrough. Uh, usually, in a lot of games, for that, my first playthrough is a spell sword, so that could be my choice. But sorcerer, a loner who felt formal ac academia to pursue. Holy cow! A loner who left formal academia to pursue further research. Further research. I can't read right now. Command souls, sorceries. Uh, using high intelligence, so the, the the caster of choice. If you want to go pure sorcerer, this is the one you'd go with. Uh, Pyromancer from a remote region who manipulates f flame. Also an ad adept close to combat warrior who wields an hand axe. So Pyromancer, handy. Starts with the Pyromancer glove. So if you want to get a head start on that, that's a good class. Cleric, a travel cleric, collapsed from exhaustion, channels high faith to cast many and varied miracles. So. Yes, high faith, uh, high strength. So yeah, just a classic cleric class from Dark Souls, essentially, and they just added the Herald class to kind of give you more versatility depending on what you want to go. So a little bit more faith, but you, you lose some melee stats and some quality stats that the Herald has here. And Deprived is Deprived. Wow, straight tens, eh? Hmm... Interesting. Let's see, I I don't know if it's going to be like Dark Souls 2 where you start with a generic armor set that you'll be able to put on so you're not naked. But I, don't, I don't personally like starting naked. I might... I mean, some people might think this is boring, but... Oh, whoa. <laughs> some people might think this is boring, but I might just pick the night class just because it's so versatile. I'm not... I'm more interested, like, the, the, the sorceries and the faith and stuff like that are interesting to me, but I'm more interested to see the weapons move sets and stuff like that. So I think, yeah, we might just stick with the knight, but yeah, we'll, we'll see knight for now. That might change. We'll see. Burial gift. Uh, life ring raises eight HP, just like in all the other games. Divine blessing, the most useless item in the game. Hidden blessing, plus full resources, FP. I'm going to assume that's mana, because I know that exists in this game. Uh, 
Firebomb charged with a special black powder on uncouth gift for the departed. Black firebomb. Fire gem. Material used to upgrade to fire weapons. Oh, okay. Interesting aspects of the uh, upgrade paths already showing their, their face a little bit. So no longer is it just going to be... Oh, wait, no, it might just work like it, it always has, or, or in, in Dark Souls 2 anyway, where you just use this gem and then upgrade with normal upgrade materials. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. A sovereignless soul of one who slept beside you used to acquire many souls for the sovereignless soul. So essentially it's just a soul item, rusted gold coin, burial item for good fortune after death greatly increases item discovery for a short while. Okay, cracked red eye orb, the classic invade, uh... Utility tool. Online play item. Young white branch. A branch of young white birch, perhaps an offering of peace, can be used to blend into an environment, but only once. So that's interesting. I wonder if it's going to be like the um, the silver coins or the... Uh, uh, I can't remember the sorcery spell now off the top of my head, but the one that changes you into environmental objects and stuff. Or if it's going to be like the... Uh, that ring from Dark Souls 1 that makes you go invisible. Or not invisible, but like see-through. I can't remember, but... Anyway, I'm probably not going to choose that one. Huh. Wow, they really don't have like a one item that's just better than all of them like they did in the first two games. Definitely no Master Key. That shit's OP. <laughs> uh, honestly, I'm having trouble picking which one. Fire seems... Like a good... Ah, that seems like a pretty good starting item. So does a life ring. Raises mass... Ah. Uh, if it's... It's probably minimal. Screw it. Fire gem. Okay. Face presets. Uh, uh, we'll... We'll make him big, big, and big tough guy. But we'll make him barely blue. We'll make him big tough guy, though. Uh, okay. Ooh, appearance. Oh, okay. What's the... F oh, I see. They have different... Oh, cool. Okay. Alright, I guess this is where I'll cut to uh, start building my character. And uh, we'll ju it'll just fast forward through, and I'll see you once I'm back. Just before I get started here, uh, I'm just gonna add this little part here. Uh... Just uh, to get a little bit of more lore here. Uh, the oh so plain face of a commoner. Everyone has imperfections, but a commoner without flaws is a rare creature indeed. So that's the commoner. Northern warrior. The face of a warrior as if hewn from the rock. It has been long whispered in jest. Northerners are born weathered and old. A store and noble. So a store, a recurring place once again. A features of a true blood, blue blood. Blue of eye and fair of hair. A little reminder of store's former glory. Dragon Academy student, intelligent face with fine lines, often read for looking like a pre uh, pretense. So you have uh, the nobles, essentially, just a, a person from the north of the northern warrior. <laughs> Regular person, uh, Dragon Academy student, so that would be somebody who is a study of magic, if I remember, that was the, what the Dragon Academy was all about, a Karim. Uh, face of cheerless cleric of Karim, so a this is the face of a cleric, apparently. Uh, okay, then. <laughs> uh, novice is used as something of a de uh, derogatory term for men of the cloth. Katarina Merrymaker. The large eyes and mouth give the face a look of jubilation from Katarina, known for its resist of life and love of drink. Uh, Alright. Serpentine Traveler, an uncommon face defined by its narrow eyes and thin lips. Some praise it as the visage of a true dragon. So Katarina, actually, sorry. Katarina is uh, where Siegmeier from, the first game's from. So that's interesting. So Katarina's back. <laughs> an uncommon face defined by its narrow eye. I already read that. Serpentine Traveler. What is this, Dragonborn? I don't know. Uh, Great Swamp Outcast. What the f Anyway, a, uni a uniquely deformed face, or perhaps merely ugly, pre prejudiced births malcontents and malcontents swarm up to the great swamp. So this would be your pyromancers and of people of that sort. Uh, Londor, shadow of death, a lifeless face, almost that of a hollow. Londor is the realm of those hollow and old. So Londor making a recurrence. I mean, 
that that had to be a thing. They've got to make some references to the first Souls if this is to be a sequel, I would assume. But the by name, that's interesting considering Drain Lake has absolutely like, the only real references to Dark Souls One is some odd mentions of some old characters and stuff like that, and uh, the fact that in New Game Plus when you kill the main big bosses, they give you the first game's uh, boss's souls, so other than that though, I mean, that's a direct reference, so interesting. Uh, the features of the old gods, as if from legend they say children born like this are fated to be taken to the Boreal Valley. I have no idea where that is. Arithelion. <laughs> I doubt I said that right, but vampire dude. Definitely not going to be going with that. I'll just be going with the commoner. Um, uh, anyway, yeah, that's all I wanted to just throw in there, and uh, I'll see you once I'm done making my character. Alright, so, uh, yeah, that's the final outcome. Uh, kind of went with the pretty boy look a little bit. Uh, but, as far as hair color is concerned, I couldn't figure it out, but apparently black's the only color you can do, and you can only add hues of other colors. I could only get, like, a vibrant gold aura around his head if I, if I set it to blonde. It was kind of weird, so I don't know if that's just glitchy or if it's intended or whatever, but... Black hair it is, I guess. Uh, yeah, blue eyes. G yeah, sort of the generic hero look, I guess, is kind of uh, what I went. I am going to play the knight, I decided. Uh, the armor just looks fucking badass, and uh, yeah, I like it. Anyway, name. Uh, this is going to be, I guess, uh... Sure. Venic. <laughs> Our hero Venic, the young knight. Uh, yeah, I, the fire gem seems to be the best choice, I guess, as far as... I mean, I'll, I'll pro more than likely use it. Uh, there are guaranteed to be enemies weak to fire in this, so probably it will be a benefit. Uh, okay, so I guess without further ado, let's get started. Okay, Cemetery of Ash. Oh wow, this game looks amazing. Uh, control camera. Okay, so basic tutorial stuff. I am actually able to fast roll with all the armor, which is insane. That doesn't seem right. Uh, I'm getting low frames a little bit. I might adjust my settings a little bit, because I am getting a little bit of low frames and so looking in the direction over here, but that's not too bad. Three S's to, to start off. Oh, shit. Okay, well, first of all, let's try it. Ooh, one hit. Perfect. Uh, I'm actually gonna go ahead and take this off. I'm not a shield user. I don't like shields. <laughs> I think they make the game too easy. So, oh yeah, I can hear the comments already. Oh, wow. You're such a badass. 
Good for you. <laughs> but honestly, I just am not a fan of the way the Shield's gameplay. If I wanted to play with a Shield, I would play. Oh, fuck. I would play Legend of Zelda. Plus, two handing seems to be doing the job fairly well here. These are just generic, weak en enemies, but Ash and Estes Flask. Uh. Is there no... Oh, maybe I have to go into the inventory. There you go. Show it a new treasure with dull ashen flasks. Fills, fill with Estus at bonfires and drink to restore FP. Quite befitting of an unkiddled an ashen Estus flask turns a bonfire's heat cold. Cool. And the regular Estus flask is undead treasure. The undead treasure, these dull green... The undead treasure, these dull green flasks. Filled with, with Estus at bonfires and drink to restore HP. The journey of an undead has always traced the bonfires, and no journey of import has been made without an Estus flask. Interesting. Dark sign. The dark sign returns its bear to the last bonfire rested at. Cares of the dark sign are reborn after death, and eventually lose their minds during all. Okay, so same, same, same idea. Charm of farewell granted to banished undead. The crystal sends phantoms back to their homes, or you back to yours. Beware of fickle use of this item if you intend to nurture relations. Way of the white circlet. Those who engage in unjust deeds when in contact with other words will lose their connection to them. Assume such way of white circlets assume such sin as their own, but are found few and far between. Acting without honor will never be without risk. Restore the connection to other worlds. I wonder if that's for like if you want to play through the campaign with somebody else. If it gives you an easy way to reconnect to each other. Guard. Oh, okay. I think that's that special ability here, so no longer able to guard with that, which is fine. Behind an enemy critical hit. Oh, well, might as well see what the backstab animation looks like. Oh! Classical Dark Souls. Right on. That's good. First of all, perfect. Okay, jump is bound to the trigger. Wow, that was a late roll. Come on, me, bro. Okay. Okay, so this armor seems to be really strong. Oh, actually, I should take a quick look at the stats scene. Uh, or the stats screen, I mean. Nothing is insane. I don't know. Yeah, they give alright stats. I'm actually That's actually a lot lower than I thought it would be. Maybe they down the numbers a little bit so that you're not going into the hundreds but more into the tens, possibly. But this seems like an armor. So no stab on the longsword. Wow, uh, this seems like an armor that would have higher stats than that using the old system. I gotta, I gotta check something. Uh, check something. It feels the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, whoa, let's see. Uh, no percentage for the equip load. Ooh, that sucks. Oh no, there it is, 53.3. So yeah, I would be below the threshold if it's still 70. Change weapons. Yeah, same old, same old. Okay, interesting. What, it, does it have a different one for... Okay! That's really cool. So if I hold L2... Uh, it turns my R1 and R2 attacks into unique attacks that use up my mana bar. That's really cool. I actually, like, I honestly, I haven't done too much research because I didn't want to spoil myself, right? So, a lot of this is just me learning what to do. Sorry, I, this, I'm, I should be making more progression. Let's, let's take a look. Actually, before I go this way, I'm just going to double check that there's no other paths to take over here. Oh, there's a guy over here. Let's see what the running attack is. Just a side slam. Oh, oh, wait. Okay, they brought back the kick. Cool. Yeah, I like that better anyway. Kick's more useful. Parry. Can I parry? No. What if I one hand? Or I am one handed. 
Okay, so apparently you can't parry with your fists anymore. Hmm. That means that I might actually have to equip a shield or a parry dagger. Um, we'll see. We'll see what I find. We'll see what I want to do. I don't even know if I will stick with this whole night outlook. Wow, these sceneries, though. Beautiful. That's a lot of fog. Yeah, that's a good way to cover up areas you don't want to draw, I guess. Getting a hu huge Bloodborne feel from the artwork. Ah, the first one part. Okay. In Kindle. I'm gonna turn off Steam notifications. Uh, I don't want to have that popping up, but... Oh, wow, so... Well, here's, let's take a look here. Point forward. <laughs> point up, point wave. Cool. So you can sit down if you want. Interesting. Oh. That feels really good. I like that. These guys are taking more than one hit now. Fading soul. Ooh. Oh, fucking A, man. There you go. Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm gonna turn that off right now, actually. I'll be right back. Alright, uh, so I removed Steve o Steam Overlay, and I also uh, adjusted my settings a little bit. We'll see if that's better. I'm not gonna drop down there just yet. Um, this feels like a place that will have an item. Ah, huh. Look at this. Oh, guy with a crossbow and a dude with a sword and shield. Come at me, bro. Perfect. Fire bombs. Okay. Might use them, might not. Actually, I'd like to see what the animation looks like, see if it's viable. So let's go ahead and throw that on the equipment, actually. Boom. Fire bombs. Let's see here. That seems to be the non-dropping down way. Let's try this out. Oh, it's slow. He missed though. That's handy. Oh shoot! I hear somebody. Oh, there you are. <laughs> That's cool. But now I'm running out of mana, so. I got to be careful. Obviously, it seems to be doing more damage, so it's like a... Ooh. A high-powered attack, is what I was going to say. Uh... Alrighty. This looks like the first boss. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Why not? Or not? Hmm. Ah, uh, let's take a quick look around first. What's over here? Nothing. I can totally skip this if I want. Ah, oh, I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling brave. Let's try this. I hope I get to keep that sword. Oh, yeah, I thought so. Let's do this, buddy. Oh, that was a bad roll. Holy cow, these feel fast. Oh, that was late, but it's alright. Holy shit. Shit, this is fast, this is fast. 
Compared to Dark Souls 2? Holy crap. Oh, damn it. Oh, that's nice and quick, though. I like the speed of the Estus Flask. Three hits, nice. Oh, shit. What is he doing? <laughs> what the fuck? What the hell is going on? <laughs> I'm gonna top myself off. Oh. Um. <laughs> Holy crap. This guy is nuts. Oh, right on. Huh. <sighs> Coiled sword. I thought I turned off... Maybe it still shows achievements? Oh well, I'll figure that out. I'll, I'll, I'll look more into it. But Holy crap! So that was the first boss. Uh, I wonder if... Did I get a key? I didn't see. Did I get an item there? It's kind of... Oop. Oh shoot. Now I'm just screwing everything up. Oh, what? Thrust and shrine bonfire to activate activate bonfire orb. Do you create your own bonfires in this? Could I have just totally bypassed him too? Yeah, it looks like it. Interesting. I'm not gonna open that door yet. Uh because I'm actually gonna end it here. Oh shit. Well, uh Huh. I guess see you on the next episode.